Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another question and answer. I look back on my older previous videos and realize that it's been exactly a month since I've done my last Q&A. So I hopped on Instagram and Snapchat and told you guys that I was going to be doing Q&A today and I got some questions. So we'll jump on to Instagram first, then we'll go to Snapchat and after I'm done filming this, I'm sure I'm going to get more questions and you know, I'm going to try to do Q&As at least twice a month. I think it's really great because you guys get to know me on a more personal level. And then if you're new, you get to know me on a more personal level. And then if you've been around for a while, you just get to learn some more fun things about me that you may want to know or that you don't know. So first question comes from Destiny Von Danger. What's the hardest thing you've had to deal with in your relationship so far? How do you like your new job? Are you ever going to do a best friend tag? The hardest thing that I've had to deal with in my relationship so far is probably a lot of like family drama. I think that it really just like weighs heavy on you and then you start to like question yourself like why am I not good enough? Uh, for my other half like why does his family or her family hate me so much like it just doesn't make sense and it just really starts to not only weigh on you but on your relationship and you just really have to have a, a really strong relationship to overcome like family issues because it's tough at the end of the day you know we can all sit here and say that family doesn't matter and like they're not the ones that have to live with the other person and it's all like true but at the end of the day, you know, family's always going to be there. Family's going to be at all family functions. If you have kids with your other half, you know, the family's going to be a part of it. You can't shut them out because it's not fair to your other half. So, you know, the family drama, I think, is the hardest thing that we've had to deal with. And I think that you just learn to accept it and you learn to just really not care and just you just learn to live with it. Like at first, it's really difficult so long. You're just like over it. <laughs> like they don't like me. They probably never will. I really just don't care. It just doesn't matter. There's like bigger fish to fry. Like there's so much more to worry about than that. And how do I like my new job? I, I'm not working anymore. Uh, I loved my job. I literally got fired for no reason. Um, the manager is a female and I'm going to just chalk it up to cattiness, fakeness, and uh, just somebody who has a problem with everybody so um you know i didn't get fired because i didn't do my job right or because i was inadequate or anything negative it was just she didn't like me anymore for whatever reason and it just turned into this big thing i actually still have text messages that i can actually share with you from her and it really makes no sense it went down like last week she was like remember when i told you to dust and price the wines and liquor what happened with that i was like i was working on it because i remember when she had asked me to do that and i did do some of it but i've always i dust every day like when i was working there i dusted every day like i always dusted the wine bottles down because they picked up dust all the time so i don't really know what that was about and she did tell me to price the wines and i did but that night that she had me do it was a Friday night, I believe, and it was busy and I, I couldn't finish it. So, and I told her that, I was like, it was really busy in there, I couldn't finish it, but I did start it. And she was like, okay, next time you see me, just show me. And I was like, okay. And then she was like, hi, I guess you mad that I told Bob, let's say, because I don't want to give out too, information, too much information, but Bob is the owner of this place. Um, I was nice to you. You've been cutting my throat. This is my job. I'm your manager. I'm not stupid. But look, my friendship is over with you, but do you want to work or not? And things can change. You decide. And like when she texted this to me at four o'clock and this was September 1st, I was like so confused. Uh, I was like taking a nap. And I just heard my phone go off and I was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. I was like, because I just literally did. I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, fine. Are you still working or not? You can work Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And I was like, whatever. And she was like, okay, I'm driving. I'll send you over the hours. I said, okay. And then she told me the hours and she was like, if you don't do any work, I will fire you. So please do your job. And I don't want anyone in the store that ain't buying. And if I find out that you're buying drugs here, I will fire you. And just so you know, when I told you to be sweet, it doesn't mean to throw yourself at the customers. I've been hearing a lot of shit. And if it don't stop, you gone. And I just said, LOL, okay. And I was like, throw myself at customers. I don't even think that's happening, LOL. And she was like, you think I'm laughing, Mariah? I know what the fuck is going on. Try me and I make sure you're gone. Okay, do your job. And 
my son's at the store and seven guys came in and didn't buy anything. They were asking for you. Tell me what that's about. Just do your job. And I was like, I can't control people coming into the store. Like, what does that have to do with me? She was like, you know what? Don't come in. Okay, I'm done. And I was like, okay, I guess I won't come in. And she was like, no, like, you don't work for me, little girl. Grow up. You look like a hoe. Grow some fucking hair, okay? Because you are a disrespectful girl. Wash your ass right before you step to me, okay? And I was like, what am I even supposed to say to that, LOL? And she was like, yeah, you're a joke. And I was like, okay. And she was like, bring the key in. It went back and forth like that. Long story short, I did nothing wrong to deserve the way I got disrespected and talked to. And this illiterate person didn't even like apologize for what they said. At the end of the day, you can't make people be good people. And I am really sad that I didn't keep my job. But at the end of the day, it was such a really bad environment that it's probably better that I'm not working there. All the surrounding shops in the area know how bad it is there and they're like I'm not surprised that you don't work there anymore because you're a good girl you got your shit together it's not gonna last and actually now they're going out of business so that's the end of that <laughs> I am currently still looking for a job I'm really looking for anything because having a job outside of YouTube even though I only had it for like a month <laughs> So, um, it was amazing and it really just was good for me. So next question. Oh, she, sorry. Dest this is really long. This is eight minutes in for one person so far, but I had to explain the whole job situation because I don't want you guys getting the wrong impression. Like I quit or something. No, I got fired for no reason. And she's like, are you ever going to do a best friend tag? Um, I don't really have a best friend. I have a lot of like friends. And I don't always see them all the time when we get together. It's like, you know, so I don't know if I would, you know, not all my friends like want to be on YouTube and it's not really like their thing. So next question comes from Jock Mill. Are you and Adam still together? Um, we are still together for now. You know, I just really didn't want to answer these relationship questions because I feel like it just gets like annoying to answer. But I understand that, you know, I put a lot of my relationship out there on the internet and to not leave you guys with that explanation, it's kind of wrong. So um, we're having issues. It's rocky and um, we're trying to work through our issues. Uh, relationships are really tough. Life is tough in general, but relationships, you know, um, it's a lot of work. You know, if you're not willing to put in the work or you're tired of working for something, then you know, it's not going to work. Uh, so we're, we're definitely, uh, we're a work in progress. We're working on things. We're trying to sort out our differences and trying to understand each other better and trying to deal with the things that we're dealing with. So next question comes from ACFG underscore. Have you ever regretted getting any of your tattoos or piercings? I haven't regretted any of them. Um, yeah, I love every single one of them. Every single one of them has a meaning. My piercings I wanted. Yeah, I don't regret anything. Next question comes from the Moody Mermaid. Will you ever do a day in my life at your new job? Uh, when I get another job and it's the type of job that I would be able to do something like that, then I will. I would love to share that kind of life with you guys. Just because I think you guys seeing me at work would be like a different side of me. I actually really love working and dealing with people. Uh, I'm a big people person, so anything like customer service related is totally my calling. I just know how to deal with people, how to talk to people, and how to, you know, coerce them into buying things or whatever the case may be. Like, I'm just a really good seller and like talker, so yeah, I could chat up a storm. So yeah, I would definitely love to do that when I get a job again. And she's like, I would love to see what you have going on daily, smiley face. Also, maybe a video about how you got your dogs and how you managed to spend time with them through having a job, household, and YouTube. It's 
Spending time with them is really easy because at the end of the day, I always have Coco in my bed and then Roscoe chills in the bedroom on his little bed. And I just bond with them. When I get home, they get tons of kisses. I give them treats. I feed them. And, you know, I just spend time with them. You know what I mean? So, um, there's always time for them because they're literally like my babies. Like Coco is a baby. She gets on her back and she has her paws up and I just like rub her stomach. Like I can hold her like a baby. There's times where I've had my knees propped up. And you know how you have a baby and you lay it on its back and it's like on your knees? I can do that with Coco and just like rub her belly and she'll just lay there. She is literally like my child. So. See, I'm getting all these like relationship questions. Next question comes from ALR624. Are you still with Adam? I'm still living here as of right now. We're still together. Like I said, it's a work in progress. And will you ever do a meet and greet? I would love to do a meet and greet local, but I really don't feel that my subscriber count is big enough to do that yet. Um, maybe when I hit 50,000 or 100,000 subscribers, I would be more, you know, willing to do a meetup. Because if I do a meetup, I want to do it big where I have tons of people coming. I want to do a meetup and meet like two people, five people. Um, if I could get a group of like 20 to 30 plus, that would be cool. Not all at once, but like come and meet me at like a mall or something. I would love to meet my subscribers. It would mean the world to me to kind of just like see you guys and hug you guys and love you guys and chat and just you know like one day guys it'll happen just I don't know when and will you be doing vlogmas this year I certainly hope so who knows where I'll be by that time you know um but I would love to do vlogmas no matter what part of my life I'm in whether it's like a crazy part or not still vlogmas is awesome so are you still a vegetarian? Yes, I'm still a vegetarian. I'm not a perfect vegetarian by any means. I'm still, you know, eating meat here and there, but definitely not like I was or in the past how I've been. I just really, ever since I went vegan the first time, I really just gained a disgust for meat and like just, it's really hard for me to eat it. So, um, it's not very like common. And, uh, what's your work schedule like? My work schedule was like, it was like um, I would work opening shift sometimes, so that'd be like nine to four, and then sometimes I'd work closing shift, which would be like three to four till nine or ten, depending on the day of the week. Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays they were open till ten. The rest of the time they were open till nine. So that was kind of how my schedule was. It kind of just like rotated like that. Um, next question comes from Gigi Cullen. How did you manage your finances on an unsteady income before you got this new job? How did I manage my finances? Um, to be honest with you, I just tried to stay really organized and know when my bills were due and making sure that I set aside the money, making sure that the money was there before anything else. Like, for instance, if I wanted to buy something off of Amazon or like a new wig or something, I would just make sure that I really had the money to spend on it. And like if I didn't have the extra money and money has to go to bills, then that's how it is. Um, my income has never really been like unsteady or bad. Just because I wasn't working a job, I still did things on the side like clean houses with my mom. Um, I still do hair on the side. I do makeup on the side. So YouTube, I do get a little bit of an income. So I've never really been like completely broke and like desperate for money. You know what I mean? I've been doing pretty well for myself. Um, I feel like a lot of people here have the impression of me that I take all of Adam's money. I don't know where people come up with the bullshit that they come up with, but people come up with some crazy bullshit. Um, me and Adam help each other out all the time. We don't pinch pennies or count pennies on each other. If Adam needed a hundred bucks and I had a hundred bucks to give him, I would give him. If he, if I needed 50 bucks, he'd give me 50 bucks. Like we've always been you know, helping each other out. It's not like we count money and say, oh, you owe me. Or, you know, when you're in a relationship with someone, as long as me and Adam have known and been together, it ain't even about that. Like at the end of the day, I'm not going to be like, that's my money. Or he's going to be like, that's his money. Like we do have our own money, but we always help each other out. So I think also that was always a bonus. Like if I was short and I didn't have it, he would be there to help me. There's only so much one person can do. So it's kind of frustrating when people make up these allegations that you take all of your boyfriend's money when clearly I don't. Because if I took all this money, our bills wouldn't be paid and we wouldn't be where we're at in our lives. So yeah, I just really am sick of seeing that, hearing that. I do not rely on Adam for his money. I do not rely on Adam because we have a home together. I rely on Adam because I am 
in love with him. I've invested a lot of time into this relationship, a lot of energy, a lot of tears, and I would hate to see it not work. But at the same time, I understand that sometimes things are just out of your control. And if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. You can't force something to work. And that's kind of just where I'm at. It's a day by day thing. And, and he knows where we're at. And that's what it is. And at the end of the day, that's all I can say about that. It comes from Kayla4418. How do you work through all the rough patches in your relationship? By the way, you're amazing. And I love you so much. Oh, I love you so much too. Thank you. I guess what makes me want to work things out, you know, there's a few things that run from, through my head, um, you know, about why I don't want this relationship to end. Um, I've invested a lot of time and energy, tears, and just time into making this relationship better and making this relationship work that I just don't want to throw all that away. But at the same time, like I've already said, it, you can't make something work that's not going to work. So, um... You know, that's one big reason that I, you know, try to make things work. I also love Adam. He's a great man. He's done so much for me emotionally and um, just, just emotionally has just been such a big support system for me and just really encourages me to, like, reach my full potential. And he's just been really, like, a great person to have in my life. And you just, someone like that, you just don't throw away and... You know, obviously I love him. We've been together four years and you just, it's, it's hard to just like throw that away. Um, I don't think like, you know, our relationship is like out of desperation. Like, oh, they stay together because it's just easier. We stay together because we genuinely love each other and we genuinely want to make it work. And that's where it's at. But at the same time, like I've been saying, we both realize that, you know, maybe it's not going to work. And if that's the case, maybe we need time apart. Maybe we need to just see how much we're going to miss each other. I, I can't tell you where my relationship's headed. Um, I hope that we can work through our issues and stay together. But at the same time, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And I can't do a goddamn thing about it except move on. And maybe down the road it'll work. I don't know what God... I got lipstick on my teeth. I don't know what God has in store for me. I pray to him all the time. Help me figure out what the best thing for Mariah is to do. And it's just a day-by-day -day process. And that's all I'm going to say about anything like that. I'm so tired of these relationship questions because they just, ugh, they're draining. It's sad, you know. Uh, next question comes from, oh, ALR624 again. You post a lot of pictures of Adam's nephew. He's gorgeous, by the way. Are you cool with his family now? Adam's nephew is beyond the cutest baby I've ever seen. I love him. He's adorable. Um, I would definitely say our relationship is not any better. Um, I really don't have much to do with his family, but the baby has nothing to do with that because he's a baby. He just came out of the womb. He has no idea of all the drama. He's not, he's a baby. Babies are so innocent. So if anybody were going to like hold it against, like if it was, it would be so stupid of me to be like, I'm not going to see that baby because I have issues with his family. The baby has nothing to do with it. Plus, um, it just, it's just kind of irrelevant to the whole situation, but um, me and his family, we just deal with each other when we see each other. We're not friends. We're not close. I don't see them a lot. I see them only when I really have to, and personally, I like it that way. There's no drama. There's no shit talking. Um, I don't have to be offended or hurt because I don't know anything, and it's just better that way. Some people you just can't have in your life no matter how bad you want to have them in your life. So I realized that at 24 years old and I just don't care anymore. I've been with, like, I've been through so much in my life and then in my relationship with Adam that I don't really care anymore about the family drama and stuff. You just learn to live with it and deal with it. And I just prefer to have very little to do with them because it just works out better, I think, for everybody. And there's less drama that way. Okay, so that's everything on Instagram. And we're going to go to Snapchat. I did, I don't know if I got anything on Snapchat, but I did screenshot one question. And they asked me to not say their name, which is fine. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to get any questions on Snapchat. So this is already a really long video. So this will be the last question I'm going to answer. And then I will wrap it up. So let me check my screenshot question. Um, how are you coping with not talking to your parents in a while? And what's your advice for disfellowshipped or fading Jehovah's Witnesses? 
Um, how I'm coping with my parents? Um, you know, I, I don't really know. I know it's through God's grace and his love for me that he's helping me get through this. I still am seeing my family. My mom was recently in a really bad accident. I haven't really mentioned it on anything except Instagram. Um, and, you know, I've been seeing her. I brought her flowers and just spending time with her because at the end of the day, I think that she is starting to realize that, you know, she was in a serious accident. She could have died. And I think that she is realizing life is way too short to, like, be petty and not talk to me. So um, our relationship is definitely a work in progress. But we're definitely seeing each other lately. And I think it has a lot to do with, like, what she's going through. And then she's got a wedding to go to this weekend. And I'm going to be doing her makeup. So my relationship with them has been, it's always going to be up and down. It's always going to be rocky. But I just try to pray, pray, pray for God just to give me the patience and the heart to deal with it and nine times out of ten he provides so um and what's my advice for disfellowshipped or fading witnesses do research encourage yourself to do research and to really believe in what you're doing I don't want you to listen to what other people say do your research and make an informed decision if you want to be a part of this organization or not but once you do your research and you realize um you don't want to be just be prepared for the big loss of everybody if you were raised as a witness you're losing everything and everybody and it's very traumatic people do not get over it like that everybody has issues from it i go to therapy tons of xjw's go to therapy some even have commit committed suicide which is terrible can't say i have never been there i have but you don't want to end your life because those feelings are so temporary and the next day could be a good day. Why take your life on temporary feelings? Like a permanent decision on temporary feelings. Feelings come and go. So that's just what I have to say about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. As always, uh, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, I'll answer them in the next Q&A. Like I said, I'm going to try to do this twice a month. I think it's great. So yeah, until next time, I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Was uh, in high school again. I probably would have used the matching powder with this. So, But I am just going to... Because when I was in high school, you know, you didn't want a shiny face. And you knew that if you didn't set your foundation, your face would be shiny. It really just... And that was, like, why I put powder on it. So at Marshall's, I got these Supernatural Treats for Dogs, the Salmon Recipe. Supposed to be good for their skin and coat. Got salmon in it and it was $2.99. Then I got the Supernatural Chicken Berry Blast, grain free and gluten free, and on clearance for $2. So we'll see if they like 